Hallelujah. 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 Great are you, Lord, and greatly to be praised. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. From everlasting to everlasting. He's always been God and always will be God from everlasting think of that from everlasting to everlasting <laughs> when does everlasting start from everlasting when is everlasting going in to everlasting that's who you serve that's who you serve. That's who you serve. Can you wrap your mind around that? From everlasting. The only way that we see miracle signs and wonders is if we understand that from everlasting to everlasting he is God he has no beginning has no end nobody made him he just stepped out and was you'll never see a miracle till you understand that in the beginning when was the beginning I don't know Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. <laughs> to the one who sits on the throne. <laughs> so, I might have to preach to myself today. But he's going to do something powerful today. I sense it. I feel 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 it. Somebody's going to be baptized today with fire. The scripture says, be baptized with fire and the Holy Ghost. Two separate things. <laughs> it's in the fire. I am not even, it's, it's in the fire. It's in the fire. Fire fall in this place today. Fire fall all over social media today. Fire fall. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Thankful to be here. I give God all the honor and all the praise and all the glory for this opportunity to be here. For this is a grand opportunity. Don't take it for granted because there are people that are not here today by no choice of their own. But God said you still got purpose. If you woke up this morning, it's because you still got purpose. If you are here, it's because you still got a destiny to fulfill. It wasn't because you were so great. It was because God had to protect you to get to you to this day. And there is a fire that is about to be released in this hour. Even over all the earth. That those who know and love God. For our God is a consuming fire. Hallelujah. If you will, let's just go to the word of God. And those of you who are in this building and those of you who are on social media platforms, we ask that you press the share button and the like button, please. Please, this morning as we worship. Go with me to the book of Exodus. And I'll be teaching a little bit around this morning. I hope I teach. We see what God is going to do. <laughs> we see what God is going to do. Exodus, the third chapter. 
Again, press the share and the like button for those of you who don't think it's robbery to share what God is doing in your life here at Beyond the Veil Worship Center. Thankful for the worship here. Thankful for the praise here. Thankful to all, for all our ministers and our elders and the deacons. I'm just thankful this morning. I'm thankful. I am thankful. I am thankful. I am so thankful. Exodus 3. When you have it, say amen. amen. <laughs> yes, three, uh, chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. Then we're going to go to verse uh, 10. Now Moses was keeping the flock. I'm reading in the Amplified Version. The flock of Jethro, Ruel, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led his flock by the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, Sinai, the mountain of God. The angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing flame of fire from the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush was on fire, yet it was not consumed. Mm. So Moses said, I, I, I must turn away from the flock from my job and see this great sight while the bush is not burnt up. <laughs> when the Lord saw that he turned away from the flock to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. <laughs> And I just want to just use as a subject, here I am. Here I am. Here I am. Can you say that to the Lord this morning? Lord, here I am. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm here today for the fire. <laughs> If you're here for the fire, I need to hear you this morning. <laughs> I need to hear you say hallelujah. in the name of Jesus. Bless your maidservant. Your word is already blessed, God. The atmosphere is charged, God, with the fire from on high. Oh, Father, ignite the fire in this place today that we will not be the same when we leave. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Someone shout, here I am. Oh, thank you, Jesus. This, as I, as I looked and was looking and trying to figure out what God was saying us, to us next about worship, he took me to the book of Exodus. Mm -hmm. And in that book of Exodus, it's about the children of Israel coming out of, of bondage, out of Egypt. We all know that if, you know, we've seen the movie, if y'all haven't read your Bibles. And, <laughs> you, know, we, you know, just shake your head like you know what we're talking about. What we're talking about. But it's about the Exodus. So let me, let me read verse 10 through uh, 12 of that same Exodus, the third chapter. But it all started with a fire. <laughs> Therefore, because of all of the fire, come now and I'll send you to Pharaoh and then bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh? And that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. And God says, certainly, I'll, I will be with you. Huh. And this shall be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve and worship. He 
He said, when you come out, you shall what? Serve and worship. <laughs> hmm. So I was going to talk about this is my exodus. I was going to talk about that, but God began to talk to me and say to me, he says that uh, you can't have an exodus without a genesis. (laughs) Everybody wants to come out, but you keep going back in. And so I got to talk a little bit about your genesis to bring you up to your exodus. Genesis is a book of beginnings in the beginning, God. It's a, it's a book of firsts. It's the beginning where you see first mentions. Matter of fact, the rest of the Bible, uh, when they start to mention and minister on things, it has to do with what can be traced back to Genesis. And so we see here that um, this chapter 3 opens up and says, Now Moses was keeping the flock of Jethro. Jethro, remember Jethro had daughters who were... Uh, shepherdesses and so Moses married one of them and so he began to take over the office of the shepherd or the pastor and leading the sheep so here we come to the point that um, how did he get there he had a Genesis experience and so what has happened is what I, I see is that we must make note of how we got to the point that we're coming out Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then, and I, I looked at it like this. I said, God, I need to find out when they're coming out, what are we coming out to? What are we coming out of? I just need to know, God. I'm, I'm hoping I'm going to paint a little bit of picture for you. But I also know this as being a preacher of the gospel. We can't do the Old Testament is the New Testament what? Concealed. Come on, preachers. We learned this a long time ago. Again, the Old Testament is the New Testament what? And the New Testament is the Old Testament yeah. revealed. Amen. Amen. So if I see it in the Old Testament, it's concealed until we get to New Testament so it can be revealed. Am I, am I right? So what is the revelation that you're talking about with fire and with Moses? Um, I went to Hebrews, and I was in there this week very, very deeply. And I'm telling you, God began to speak to me about what was going on with us. Hebrews chapter 2. Ah. Hmm. Chapter 2, verse 5. It was not to angels that God subjected the inhabited world of the future when Christ reigns, which about we are speaking, but one has solemnly testified somewhere in Scripture, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou graciously care for him? You have made him a little while lower in status than the angels. And you have crowned him with glory and honor and set him over the works of your hands. You have put all things under in subjection under his feet, confirming his supremacy. We're talking about Christ. Now in putting all things in subjection to man, he left nothing outside his control. But at present, we do not yet see all things subjected to him. So what is he saying? He is saying all of the things, we'll go back to Genesis, but everything that you went through is now under your feet. Because Adam was the first Adam, but the last Adam is Jesus Christ. So we see the first Adam in Genesis, but the last Adam here we see in the New Testament, which means it was he was concealed until he got revealed in New Testament. Yes. A- am, am I saying that? Yes. Am I talking right? But we see the same scripture, Psalms 8 says, What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visited him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and have crowned him with glory and honor. That means... That Jesus had to have a human experience. Because the human experience is necessary to perfectly equip us for our next. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Moses had the human experience, yes. and it frightened him. Yes. The Bible says that in Genesis we see everything going on. That there was the, the, we know the story. Darkness is upon the face of the deep. The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. We see the creation. We see Abraham. We see all of that. Abraham coming, and we see all of that. But what are we seeing? We're seeing the human experience without grace. So by the time we get to chapter 3 with uh, uh, Moses, he has killed the man, and he is on the run. But I'm here to tell you the power of God is not limited to your experiences. God's power is greater than your sin. Oh, God, I sin. You can't use me. His power is greater than anything that you could do because he'll use what he wants, who he wants, when he wants, how he wants. And he uses fire to burn Because if he was limited by our sins, he would not be God. That does not give us a, 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 a clean slate to sin. It says that we are no under the longer under the law that says, oh, I sinned yesterday. God will never use me. God will use you because he is not limited by you. Can I speak to about three people who disqualify yourself? I'm not talking about those up on the front seat. I'm talking about who those who know that you disqualified yourself in your mind and you thought God was, he was significantly limited because of what you did. seen God use the most craziest people in my lifetime because <laughs> he says I'm not limited by a human being so we, we see Moses doubting he gets to what was called a burning bush God's calling him he's relegated his life to being a shepherd Because of what he's done in Genesis, when he gets right, right around here to, to Exodus, he figures, like, I can't come out of this because of what I've done. <laughs> Am I helping anybody? And not only when we look at 3 1, we see now Moses, there was a burning bush. Moses was going about his life thinking that now I know there was greatness on my life when I was in Egypt. When I was with everybody, all my friends, I was the life of the party. When I was there, I was looked up to. But now that God is calling me and I realize that that lifestyle was not what God was calling me to, now I realize I'm not qualified. What is man <laughs> that thou art mindful and the son of man that thou would visit in him? <laughs> what am I, God, that you would think about me? How is it that you would consider even me? <laughs> After all that I have done that people know about, <laughs> the part that they don't know about and you know about it. How would you use me? Because it's your position a little lower than the angels. But guess what? He didn't die for the angels. Ooh, I'm on. It, your human experience is necessary to perfectly equip you 
tell somebody it's the human experience. Yeah, those who don't never do nothing wrong and always in the spirit all the time. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about those human experiences that you, you failed at, that you were great at, all of work that's been together. He said that was equipping you. We get Moses sees a burning bush, and the Bible says he turned away from his flock to look at the bush. <laughs> Lord have mercy, God preached this thing to me. You thought that this was it. You thought that this was all I was calling you to do. Can I speak to four people? You thought that this is the best that it's going to get. This is all God is calling me to do, and I'm going to do this until he comes back. He had to turn himself away from being a pastor. <laughs> he says, because there's more for you. He got his attention by fire. Some of you, God is going to get your attention by fire. I don't know who this is for this morning, but it's going to take fire to get your attention, to move you from mediocrity, to move you from complacency. He's got to turn it up to make you move. He's got to turn it up to get you in the right place. he got to turn. Somebody say burn. And the Bible says, that God appeared to him in the fire and called his name and said, Moses, Moses. <laughs> Good God Almighty. He called his name how many times? Look at him. He began to call his name from the fire. And he realized that that was God. Ooh. This son is going to really only God. <laughs> who 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 has had a sense a yearning in your inner man and you knew it was only <laughs> and can I say to you that God was calling him from the third heaven oh y'all y'all don't want to hear about that no more they preaching that now trailblazers come and start talking about it and then it become manifest <laughs> but he's calling him from his third heaven place of worship come on y'all yeah. <laughs> let me let me let me because we know that the first heaven is the earth realm. The second heaven is where there is the warfare. And the third heaven is the abode of God. Am I right? But in man, he's calling man. Your first heaven is your flesh or your body. Your second heaven is your soulless realm. Where all the fighting goes on. Where the likes and the anger and the hate and the disgust and the love and the mercy goes on. But then there's a place that the real you does abides. And that's in your spirit realm. And that's your third heaven he began to call him from his third can I tell you God is calling you from your third heaven y'all I need about four worshipers to know that's why he says in John God is a spirit they that worship him must worship him in your third heaven See, he got to burn off that second heaven to get to the third heaven. He got to burn off that part that hate, that part of disgust, that part that is resentful, all of that, that part of rejection. He got to work through that with fire to get to the real you, the naked bare bones you, the one that won't rebel against you, the one that you came here with. with
when he breathed into you, you became. So you won't be led by your second heaven, how you feel, what they say, what they do, what you sense. I don't feel, I don't know. He said, when I burn through all of that, Moses, when I burn through your human experience, I can get to the real you. That's the you that don't fight no more. Can I talk to somebody's third heaven? That's the you that don't rationalize no more. That's the you that just is there, God, here am I. you that when you walk into a place you're so naked and unashamed that demons fall out uh, and that purging goes on all over the place uh, and that people get healed uh, and set free and deliver you ain't even got to yell at a demon because he see your spirit man coming and your spirit man is so pure that he can't stand the light of you They're not going to get that because most people caught up in your second heaven. He didn't call me back. She didn't speak to me. I killed a man in Egypt. Come on now, caught up. God couldn't speak to Moses until he got him into his third heaven. He said, because the power, Hebrews 2, 6 to 8 said, the power that is housed in you is come from on high. So there is a power that is housed in you that you can't tap into until you get God to burn off that second heaven. You don't need more power. You just need a burning. Am I making sense to anybody? I said, God, you want me to tell them this? They're not going to understand. He said they're ready for it. They understand because they keep going from Genesis to Exodus, then back to Genesis and back to Exodus, and then back to Genesis and back to Exodus. They never get to Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, first, second. They don't get to there. He said, I want you to go tell Pharaoh, you Moses, you Moses, you Jeanette, you elder, you pastor, I want you to go tell him because the fire is in you. And when you walk in there, the fire goes before you to burn off everything. <sighs> Someone shout, here I am. Yeah, yeah. Y'all are waiting for a revival. God says the revival is in you. You're waiting for somebody on two legs like you that's got life and human experiences like you to come and tickle your second heaven and you think that you've had a revival. You know, you've just been tickled. Till you go into your third heaven. Till you let your second heaven be burnt off. He says, because I'm going to fill you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Oh, you got the Holy Ghost, but you ain't got no fire. When we get down to verse 10, we see that he's made all these 
he's making these, these excuses, but he said, therefore, come now, I will send you to Pharaoh and then bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who, who am I? Second heaven. Uh-huh. Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the children of Israel out? God said, certainly, I will be with you. Why? And this shall be a sign. The sign is, oh, God. The sign is when you come out, you're going to worship. Can I speak over here? The sign is when you come out, you're going in to worship. Let me speak over here. The sign is when you come out, you're going into worship because you learned how to praise me in, uh, under those circumstances. And the praise kept bringing you just a little bit out, uh, but you didn't worship me. So you went back into your genesis again because you got that thing down. You're praising in bondage. <laughs> What did you say? God says, uh, Egypt presses you into your praise. Can I speak to some, oh, somebody on the third row? Egypt will press you into your praise. Because you're praising to get the devil off of your back. You're praising for your car. You're praising for your house. You're praising for your money. You're praising for your boo. You're praising for your mind. You're praising for your job. You're praising for everything else. But when that's gone, your worship was... He said, Egypt presses you into praise, but the release presses you into worship. Somebody's going to get a release today. It's going to push you into worship. People don't, 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 don't look at me like that. I know what I'm talking about. Remember when Jesus cleansed the ten lepers? Yeah, they went away praising, but only one came back to worship. He bowed down before him. And guess what happened when he bowed before him? What did he say? He was totally healed, totally made free. Good God Almighty. So praise makes you free of one thing, but worship makes you totally. Worship. Praise makes you thank him for your car. But worship lets you know that the cattle on a thousand hills belongs to him. I ain't got to settle about one car because next week I'll be back for gas. And the next week I'll be back for tires. And the next week I'll be back for something else. But worship says, though he slay me. Can I push you to worship? Yes. Yeah, can I push you to worship? Yes. You carry a fire inside of you that when you walk into a place, it gets the attention. Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> They're not looking at you because you're cute. You're cute. They're not looking at you because you got a nice outfit. You got a nice outfit. But the one thing that they're looking at is who is that? Remember, Moses looked and kept looking because it was fire. The world is looking and they're still looking because of the fire. Tell somebody there's fire in me that's not consuming me. don't understand is that the enemy sees the fire and tries to punk us out because he knows you don't even know the fire that you're carrying you're so paranoid you think it's about you you know why the enemy backs down from you it's not because you're so holy it's because of the fire in you I need about four people that's ready to walk in this type of fire. 
You can't walk in it and just talk it. When you walk, you are walking flames of fire. Let me, let me see. There's Trusty Pearson here. Raise your hand. Do you remember, we would have Bible study. Everybody's sitting at a desk. Everybody's sitting at their desks. Worship would take place, and everybody in the, in the class start purging. Who was there? You were there. We would just worship. Nobody touched nothing. But all over the room, people started purging. It was because of the fire of God. Because the demons couldn't stand the fire. Our second heaven had been crucified so much that we were just walking in worship. Can I, who, I, I need about three people to understand. We didn't go there with the purpose of casting out devils. We walked in. Vic was there. We walked in there. And what did they do? Fall on the floor and purge. I know y'all don't want to hear this out on social media. And I don't care. But I'm telling you what we saw and what we experienced. And the thing about it is when you know that there is fire in you and you have been baptized with the fire, you're not afraid to walk in certain areas. Can I teach you a little bit? Because the enemy does not want to get burned. He cannot take fire into his bosom. So we don't have to shout our way around in a frenzy to get God to move. All we got to do is know who God is. Through worship, our spirit man walks into a place. The Red Seas open up. The Jordans open up. Anything in your way got to get out of your Can I get people who are ready to walk in there? Yeah, you got to let that second heaven stuff die. I don't care who did what, to whom, when, how. At some point, you, you turn away from that and get the attention. Yeah, we got to go higher. We're not going to go from place to place just, just praising. Because praise is comely for the saint. But at what point do you go higher? Can I speak to about three people? Just three. At some point, don't you want to go higher? At some point, don't you realize that if it's like this till Jesus comes back, it's got to be more. Give somebody a high five and say, there's got to be more. He said, you come out, tell them when they come out, tell them to come out and worship me. <laughs> tell them this is their exodus, is to come out and worship me. Yeah, that's what they forgot to tell you. Because he said, some of us have gotten caught up into the prosperity ministry, and I believe in prosperity because he says it's for me. But when I get stuck there, he says, you're stuck in praise because you always got to praise me for the next handout. And then that handout becomes old and you praise me for the next handout. And then you got to praise me for the next healing because now you got a toe ache. But then next week you got an eye ache, you got to praise me for the eye ache. It's a trick of the enemy because he understood where worship is. He understood if you ever worship him, you don't have to keep asking him for the same thing. You understand that sickness got to leave. 
you understand that poverty gotta go. You understand that malady is a thing of the past. You understand if I lose this job, God got a better for me. You understand that he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. My, Moses says, Moses said, uh, he makes all of these excuses. But then he says, well, when I go to Pharaoh, who, who am I going to tell them this sent me? You worried about who going to tell you? He says, look, tell them that I am. Yeah, I missed a good place to shout. He says, because I'm going to be with you. You just open your mouth and say, I am that I am sent me. <laughs> Listen, the phrase I am in Hebrew is closely related to God's personal name. <laughs> Jehovah or Yahweh, which occurs more than 6,000 times in the Bible. Though the meaning is not completely clear to biblical scholars, it seems to suggest the timelessness of God or the very foundation of all existence. So when he says, who sent you? The timelessness of God sent me. Y'all missed it. The timelessness of God. He's not confirmed. He's not, he's not limited by your time, Pharaoh. You got to go. And if you don't believe that, tell them the very foundation of everything that exists. From Genesis to Revelation sent me. See, we preach so much about things that we don't preach about who God is. Can I say that? We, we got all of these personal uh, 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 flow charts about if I do 10 of this, then this will get me to the next level. How about if I just take God into my bosom? that was powerful he says perhaps they was hitting at revelation 1 4 for who him who is whom who was and whom who is to come sent me but you killed a man moses from everlasting to everlasting sent me because I may have killed a man yesterday but that don't have nothing to do with my tomorrow I may have messed up last week but he called me from before the foundations of the world and guess what because of the, well, the consequential will of God I teach that all the time not the good, not the perfect, not the acceptable, but the consequential will of God. That's where he's walked out every consequence that could have happened to me. And he still causes it to work together. He knew I'd walk slow, and he counted that in my progress. He knew I'd made the wrong mistakes, and he counted that in my progress. He knew I was going to be stubborn and rebellious, but he counted that in to my progress. For we know that all things. Someone take consequential will of God. Because he's bigger than our consequences. He's not confined about our consequences. Because when he set the flow chart of your life out, he put in there you was going to marry the wrong person. He put it, come on now, help, help in this house. He put in there that you were going to make the wrong decision. He put in there you were going to have them kids out of wedlock. He put all that in there and he still called you.
Someone shout, here I am. Here I am. Thank God for the consequential will of God. He said, they're going to be in this thing for about mm, 10, 11, 12 years. I'm going to put it right here because I got to figure that out. <laughs> yeah, I got to work it all together so that when they do get to that point uh, where they surrender totally to me, uh, when that second heaven had finally burned up in them, uh, they're going to come through as pure gold. Uh, so please be patient with me. Uh, God is not through with me yet. Uh, but when God gets through with me, I shall come forth. I shall come forth. I shall come forth as pure gold. So here I am. Use me, Lord. As a pastor, I don't choose people to have certain positions based on their now. God didn't choose me based on my then. I just see the call, and I know some kind of way God done figured it out in his plan, and he's going to work it out. He might not work it out today. But in the end, he's going to work it out. And they're going to preach the gospel. They're going to live the gospel. They're going to make souls. They're going to be delivered. And they're going to deliver other people. Shout it out. of God in here I feel the fire of God in here I feel the fire of God in here and he's coming after your soulless realm he's coming after that hurt he's coming after that pain he's coming after that unforgiveness he's coming after that thing that you don't want to let go and I release the fire of God in here under the feet of the demon that want to hold you hostage Hallelujah. Burn fire, burn. Burn fire, burn. I, we, not, we don't need music right here. I hear God. I hear God. I hear God. He's going to come through your row. He's going to come through your row. Put your hands up and begin to worship him. Because there will be a burning. You're going to feel a burning. Ooh. The fire of God in this place. The fire of God is burning. Even where you are on social media. God is not limited to social media. He's coming right where you are to move you by fire. Oh, God. Oh, God. Hey. Yes, the fire of God. It's the fire of God. It's the fire of God. He's burning off unforgiveness. Oh, God. He's burning that thing off. Oh, God. He's burning it. He's burning it. Yeah, I see. I see, God. I see. 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 I see deliverance here. Deliverance has come. Deliverance has come to this house. Deliverance has come to this house. 
Deliverance has come to this house. God, do what you do best. Be God. We give you glory, God. We give you honor. We magnify and worship you. Lord God, because you're great and greatly to be praised. We thank you, God, for perfect fellowship between you and us, God. What is man that I am mindful of us, God? The son of man that you would visit him, God. You give us perfect fellowship with a God like you. God, as great as you are, it shows us who you are. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus.